Traders Couture and I am so so excited to finally introduce you to my brand new brush studio and it is a watercolor tie-dye brush studio with 83 brushes and 60 ready-made color palettes and what's cool about this um, brush set is it lets you uh, everything is built in so there's no stamping it's just you know a lot of you guys are familiar with my multicolor brushes and this is the exact same thing you get to have a lot of fun and just paint and and you don't have to like stamp or align anything and you can make these really amazing watercolor tie-dye effects and I have been working on this for a while now because um I had actually posted some uh, watercolor inspiration or um, tie dye inspiration in February of this year because I was inspired by the um, Tom Ford. Uh, I don't know what season it was, but the latest fashion show. And so I was, um, you know, inspired by this outfit and I thought it'd be really cool to make some really fun um, watercolor brushes. And so I kind of started with that and then I kept playing with it and expanding my collection. And now I have an amazing set and I think you're going to have a lot of fun playing with this and getting a lot of being able to make a lot of cool things. And I actually screenshotted this from an S magazine um, because tie dye has been trending all summer and it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. So this is a hot trend. You can make a lot of cool things with these tie-dye brushes. You can use it in your card designs, surface pattern, digital backdrops, um, client work, social media graphics. There's so many things that you can do. So um, in the following video, I'm going to show you how to load them up, the, all my tips and tricks for having a lot of fun with these Photoshop brushes. So before we start having some fun, we need to load up our brushes and our color palettes. So if you, once you unzip the file folder download, you're going to find the color palettes that I've already made for you as a pattern file, PAT, and the brushes as an ABR. So let's pop over to my Photoshop here. And to load up the brushes, you simply go to Window, Brushes, to make sure that your brush window is open. Go to the top right-hand corner here and click Import Brushes. And then you navigate to your download folder and find that um, ABR file and just load it up. And then you're going to have in your brush panel a file folder that looks like this. So you've got all your tie-dye brushes. And then to um, the second step is going to be to load up the pre-made color palettes. Of course, you can make your own, but I've made you um, a bunch of palettes to play around with. So you go to Window. Um, patterns because they're saved as a pattern file to make sure that your pattern um, window is open and then you go to the top right corner you click import patterns and then you navigate to wherever your file location is and you'll load them up and then you're gonna have the um, color palettes that I've already made for you and then later on I'll tell you how you can make your own so once you have them loaded up then you can just Let's go here, create a new layer on my demo file. Um, I am going to go to my pattern stamp tool, first of all, very key, pattern stamp tool. I'm gonna go here and grab one of my color blends. And in this case, I'll just grab this one here. And I'm gonna grab one of my brushes. So this is brush eight, which is one of my favorites. And we want to make sure that up here, we want to make sure that first of all, the pattern stamp tool is selected. You have impressionist, but not aligned. You've selected your color palette from up here. We've got our brush already selected. And then we just start painting and we get all these amazing colors coming out of the brush. And with these beautiful um, tie-dye tie -dye patterns worked into the brush. So it's really fun. It's really easy. And then um, in the next parts, I'll give you some really cool tips and tricks for working with the brushes.
Okay, so one of my favorite features about these brushes is that for every brush, I've created an inverse brush of it. And I'm gonna show you um, one of the benefits of working with these. So just before I created this um, brush stroke here um, with brush number eight, and now I'm gonna create a layer above it and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my regular brush tool, not my pattern stamp tool, and I'm gonna have uh, put uh, white here as my, as my foreground color because my background is white. And I'm gonna go grab brush 8B. And now what this brush is is an inverse brush. So say I want to see some more of the pattern here or I've painted a little too much. Well, I can brush over this and use my pressure and it's going to bring out some more of those, um, it's gonna basically paint the inverse and I, I even, you know, specially worked with these brushes to make them really cool, but you know, this lets you, you can go over it and kind of cut back out some of those things. So it's a separate layer and I'll just show you here, here's the inverse, but by um, coloring over it, you know, I can get back some of these details and just have a little fun with it. So that's one of the things you could do. Um, also, I just create, normally what I do is I just put a new layer above it and that's easy peasy. Or you could take that layer that you've already draw, um, drawn, create a clipping mask and with black as your color, you can go like this to kind of take away some of those, um, the paint so that you can see the pattern a little bit more. So that's kind of a cool thing you can do with it. Um, another thing that you can do is just uh, create a new layer above it and let me just, uh, I'll grab a color here like a bright pink and with my regular brush tool selected or you could use a color blending brush, you know, you can use that inverse tool and kind of, you know, play with that um, like so and just have a little fun with it, you know, so. It's, it's kind of fun to play with and you can experiment and layer or whatever, but what's cool about these brushes is that the color blending does on its own, so that's really fun. And um, playing around with the main brush versus the inverse can be really fun. And another thing that I like to do is um, I might make a new layer and you know use my inverse brush. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put it as black just so you can see it. So this is the inverse. And um, then you can add like a layer style on it, like a gold or something like that. Or I can create a new layer above the main one, add the gold to it, and then use like my main brush and add some cool gold. So you can have a lot of fun with this, a lot of room for experimentation and having fun, but that's the whole principle behind the inverse. And the main reason why I wanted it was um, so that I could go back like with a white and kind of, you know, reveal more of the, the pattern. So that's a lot of fun. You can have a lot of fun playing with um, the inverse. And if you have any questions about that, just let me know. Okay, so in this part, we are gonna talk color palettes. Well, I had some fun and I made you like 60 color palettes that are already pre-blended so you can have some fun with some of those. And you can all just give you a little demo here. Let's grab something fun. I love like some pink and blue. How cute is that? So have fun with that. And the right window here. Um, don't use these with any of my color blends. A lot of you guys are familiar with my color mixing um, brushes and I've made loads of color palettes like with my Artistic Autumn, Modern Impressionist, Palm Beach Garden Party, Iridescent, Romantic English Garden, much more. Also, I'm always dropping new color palettes um, on my Patreon, so uh, there's some there. So, an, or you can make your own, and I'm just gonna show you a really quick way, like it's totally not rocket science, so whatever colors are in your pattern are gonna start spitting out your brush. And for example, I just made a little um, 200 by 200 uh, thing, and with a basic brush, I painted on some colors, um, some uh, bright colors here, I forget where I got this, but anyway just some random colors. And so just to demo that for you, so if I take this one here 
and let's just grab another brush. Um, oh, we'll just grab the same brush. Uh, and then all of the colors that are in this little file folder that, which by the way, you have to define that as a pattern, of course, so you can create this. Go edit, define pattern, click OK. Now it's available as a pattern and whatever colors you draw in here, it doesn't have to be sophisticated just because it's going to rotate through and spit out whatever colors these are. They're just going to come out your brush. So that's how easy it is. So you can make color palettes super specific to, um, you know, your design needs. So it's really perfect and you get these beautiful, you know, colors coming out like this. Oh, and one of the things I wanted to point out, I created some really, oops, not over there. Um, let's select it up here. Uh, yeah, there we go. I created some really cool, uh, like, uh, indigo blue kind of um, color palette. So you can play around with those because there's like a style of, oh, God, I keep clicking over here. I have to shut this because really you have to select your patterns up here. But I make this mistake all the time. So, um, I don't know, there's a style of tie-dye called shib, shibor, I don't know what it is. It begins with an S, and it's like indigo kind of um, palette. So at the end of my palettes, I create like, um, I don't know, six, ten of those uh, indigo style pattern palettes. Excuse me. And I'm going to show you a little trick, which is really cool. Um, one of my favorite things is to go on Adobe Color. Okay, so I'm going to show you two ways we can make a color palette. First of all, I like this one here. So I'm not going to download this. I'm not going to do anything. I am just taking my screen recording and I'm going to create a, a screenshot and just select a piece of the image here. Okay, so I go like this. And then now that one's going to have more complex. It's going to have a lot of colors on it. But sometimes it's nice to work with just these because they really blend a lot in the um, tie-dye brushes. So sometimes I prefer to stick with a simpler color palette. So I'm going to do my same thing, oops, and create a, a screenshot. And, and I, this is the perfect size. I don't want it too big. So I'm just going to screenshot this little strip here. All right. And I'm going to show you the two different ways that we can do... Um, some color palettes from that. So let's go over to Photoshop here. And these are nice and small, which is a perfect size. So I'm going to hit Command M. That's my shortcut. Or you go to Edit, Define Pattern. I'm going to click OK. I don't need to name them. And shut that one. And then I'm going to go to Command M, Define Pattern, um, Edit, Define Pattern, click OK. What's funny is if it, even if it's a big one like this, it realizes that those are duplicate pixels. And so it makes this really skinny little thing. You almost can't see it on the pattern menu. But now let's go over to our document here and use one of those new, um, you know, I'm going to put this as a large thumbnail here. So this is the picture that I just took a screenshot and defined it as my pattern. And, um, I'm just going to go like this. Wait, I'm going to do a different brush. And then, you know, all the colors that are on that screenshot are going to come out of there. Let's play with a brush number three is kind of good or four. Okay, let's undo that. Well, you can see, you can see what it is. Or I can take the one that I did of just the little four or five colors. You can't really see that there. It's a little hard, but you know, that's the one that I just made and do the same thing. This is a different brush and uh, I have to do some, normally they will not be this slow. I have got to do some house cleaning on my Mac. I have got something going on with my memory that's been crazy, but this is all the colors that were in this little, um, screenshot that I just took. So that's two different ways that you can, like, these are all kind of, I don't know, analogous. I think that's whatever. They're all kind of similar, but that's the two different ways that you can make um, your own color palette. So you can match them exactly to your design or exactly to a photo and have a lot of fun, have a lot of creative freedom. And if you have any questions about the color palettes, just let me know down below in the comments.